Can you dare? Would you give us a thumbs up? All right, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Always the, the moment of truth. <laughs> All righty, it is three o'clock and I'm going to call Monday, March 7th, 2022's Design Review Committee's meeting to order. And for the record, appointed members of Gresham and Bird are um, available on Zoom and committee member LeBray will not be joining us today um, in person. There's money in official form borrow as well as and Associate Planner Beal and online um, Planner Betty Um Are there any changes to the agenda? None from the committee or staff. We'll move on to the consent agenda consisting of the Monday, well, not Monday February 22nd, 2022, actually Tuesday, uh, minutes from the last meeting. So unfortunately, I had to leave the meeting and I was not able to get back in. Um, <clears throat> I think there was something wrong on my side. So I don't have any comments on the, on the minutes. Uh, we can table those minutes um, until the next meeting. Uh, that way, uh, there can be a, a form um, approval of those minutes. So thank you for reminding us of that. All right, and then that will bring us down into design review fiscal year 2022, number one. Uh, Mr. Hatch, I'll turn it over to you. Good afternoon, um, design review commissioners. Thank you for your consideration of our uh, reapplication for design review of 6845 North Gardner Lane. <clears throat> From the comments that we got uh, at our last hearing, Commissioner uh, Bray had indicated that one potential solution to uh, concern for the front entry and pedestrian access was to create kind of a plaza gathering space, uh, incorporating some planters and defining that entry off of the sidewalk more appropriately. <clears throat> um, just kind of a quick recap of our vicinity map location off of uh, Gardner and Carlton Bay. Uh, went ahead and updated the landscaping plan, incorporating that plaza and those, those planters, defining that entry uh, more significantly, as well as updating our, our site plan with that plaza. So the intent would be that this entire area is utilized for that gathering space. And then you have that kind of um, you know, seasonal slash um, you know, a couple times a month access for a fire engine, but the balance of the time it can be utilized as a public space. Um, a couple other comments and considerations from the design review at our last hearing um, was they felt that the architecturally um, significant screening was not a, an alternative for glazing. So we went ahead and on proposed elevations on the south where we previously just had our glazing up above where we proposed the architectural uh, accent features which are to, uh, to stay but in addition to that we added glazing down at the ground floor level 
to satisfy the uh, glazing calculation requirements for that elevation. Um, this proposed elevation, we added the planter and also adjusted the, the grades along here for that plaza space. For the east elevation, uh, similar to what we had previously, we went ahead and added glazing here to satisfy that request. We also have glazing in the, um, the actual storefront door, the, the, the overhead door. And then on the western side, the glazing stayed you know, comparable to what was previously proposed. Um, with that, I uh, will stand for any questions. Thank you. Um, any questions for Mr. Hutch? And uh, I don't believe that because there wasn't, uh, we had agreed at the last meeting that there wouldn't be time for a staff review. So I don't believe there will be a staff report today. Uh, but before we really just delve into discussions, um, because there is no information uh, that has been proposed, is there any member of the public that wishes to testify to this matter? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll close the, the public testimony and turn it over to the committee for discussion. Okay. I think I was just hoping that it would be mirrored and it would be an easy answer with the uh, public spaces on the street side. Commissioner Hurd, I think uh, Carrie Hooper, the, the property owner and operator for Glass Doctor is there. He may speak to um, why we wanted to try to define Commissioner Lebray's uh, recommendations. So if, if uh, it'd be okay, uh, Carrie could probably speak to that decision a little bit more. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I went over those plans and went over those plans after the last meeting and uh, really understood that that was the main thing that you would like to see is, is take that northwest corner lobby and flip it to the northeast corner. And my biggest concern is um, you're just, you're quite a ways away from the parking spaces. All that parking uh, for our customers are, is on the west side. Um, so trying to get to what you had expressed, get some plaza area in there, address that, make that look more um, pleasing to the general public and give them an area to maybe enjoy the coffee right next door from start from a uh, human being um, and take the appeal into adding the, the glazing into that. Um, that seemed to be the, the biggest area. If, if, if the lobby was not switched to that corner, the glazing and the plaza, it sounded like from the comments would maybe achieve that same appeal. And I think uh, just kind of resonate a little bit more. The, the, the original approved design review was driven, the, the SUP and really the, the design was driven off of maintaining fire engine access. And, you know, if we mirror that location, we've looked at it a range of different ways and it really defeats the purpose of fire engine access to this site. And so, um, part of the emphasis on the suggestions from Commissioner and Bray. Uh, am, I, am I saying this name wrong? <laughs> well, love Bray. I think it's okay. Um, 
was really to try to emphasize the pedestrian access to that entry, focus on it being a, a, a friendly access, but still for um, achieve the overarching function of, of the site, which we had you know, from day one, which was uh, to be able to service uh, North Ada Fire District, Eagle Fire District from, from this uh, site. And so where, where Carrie's really struggling with, with modifying this and really you know, reaching out to Design Review to say, hey, is there anything we can do to maintain that is because we're, we're effectively eliminating the ability to service fire engines at this site by, by making that decision. And so... <clears throat> can, can Jeff, let me interrupt for a second. Can you go to the plan and maybe share a screen for a moment and explain you know, why, why a fire truck can't pull in and out of the overhead doors that are already lined up in alignment? I guess I'm not understanding why. Yeah, so uh, the, the length of this building is just long enough for us to get the appropriate uh, calibrations for a fire engine. The length of this building is not. So assuming that we can bring a fire engine through this portion um, is, is not going to work from a calibration standpoint. And so the, the function of this from our original design review approval and this design review approval was that we were able to maintain the distance that we need to be able to achieve the access that we have here, which was originally projected at a diagonal through the site. Uh, working with Kerry, we were able to work with the fire department to really pinpoint what that is. And from what we previously had, propose on the depth of that, we were able to work with the, the local fire departments and get exactly what that distance was and achieve that on a more com compact structure lane versus forcing the entire site to be driven from that. But the location of that access hasn't changed primarily for the function of being able to calibrate fire engines. So they just pull in and pull out of that, let's call it patio entrance. Correct. And this isn't something that's serviced every day. This is a, a, a fairly routine maintenance, but it's not something that is done on a daily basis. And so, you, you know, the feasibility of using this as a plaza space, a gathering space, having uh, defined planters, having distinct, uh, you know, colored floor uh, plaza finish, and, and defining that as a pedestrian friendly accessible point to this facility is something that we can achieve by still maintaining that overarching objective that we've had since day one. As soon as we mirror this, well, we, we totally understand and understand uh, well, the objective of design and review, but to be able to access on the other side becomes very difficult to maneuver a fire engine through this site. Because you're, when you're pulling this in and out, you're doing it at an angle. You're going in the patio door and out the back door. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And so then, that's... and then, what's the like? Why can't you stretch the building two feet so that they can just pull in and pull out straight? Uh, due to our existing easements and cross access we only have so much length that we're able to move and we're maxed out in both directions. So on the one end, we have you know, parking, sidewalk, building, and then we have our setback. And then the other direction, we have cross access, plaza, building, and then our setbacks. So if we could just rotate it, we would just rotate it. We wouldn't be... <laughs> We wouldn't be trying to say we can't do it. So. But I'm working with Kerry. He's he really likes this site, and, and that's why we got the approval last time. If if there's anything else we can do to make that 
entry feel more accessible, more defined, more distinctive to the intent. Um, we're certainly open to suggestions. And we understand that, you know, that pedestrian glazing at, at the uh, eye level was important and bringing that back was a concession Kerry was willing to, to make and keep you know, the, the architectural panels. So I feel that he's trying to, He's trying to at least meet you halfway, if not, you know, uh, achieve above what's expected elsewhere to try to hold on to that program. Can, can I ask a question about the, the plaza? Um, sure. I'm, if you would bring up the, um, the rendering, the plaza rendering again, please. Um, <clears throat> so a pedestrian um, from the sidewalk mm -hmm. would have to go all the way over to the drive. I mean, is there, because I'm looking at this and then I'm looking at the, the site plan and it seems like the, the pedestrian connection is again, not at the building, it's after the driveway, uh, maybe, maybe, can I share, I'm gonna share my screen. Sure. Can you stop for a second? Yes. Uh, let me try this. Okay, so right here, I would expect a pedestrian, can you see my cursor? Mm -hmm. I would expect a pedestrian to be able to walk from here to here. But if you look at, the um, the site plan, the sidewalk is going all the way. Well, no, it does kind of, but that doesn't match what's on the on the rendering. So, Marine, seems like you're uh, it's, it's kind of like putting the pedestrian out here instead of here, where you would strengthen that relationship to the building. But maybe it's just the way it's rendered here. Um, Commissioner Gresham, the location that you were looking at is the corner of Gardner Lane and Carlton Bay. The actual oh, condition it. would be yes. over on, on the front. And so I, I, I think one thing that uh, may need to be uh, defined a little clearer, and I can share my screen to elaborate if that's okay. Yeah, let me do that. I keep turning this building around. I don't know why but I keep looking at the site plan from a thinking the roads are in a different location. Yeah. All right. So from, from the, uh, the concept rendering, which is conveying- you You're not sharing yet, Jeff. Okay. I just wanted to kind of hi highlight um, what I was seeing. So from the concept rendering, which I will share my screen so we can see. <laughs> there we go. We, we worked through a range of iterations with Carrie and we felt this one uh, made the most sense. So the intent with this is that you would have uh, a planter that also can work as a bench here. We would have a plunger here from a visibility and also access standpoint that defines that entry in and over to the access. And then a couple additional planters to define the balance of that entry. We look at the landscaping plan. Um, it appears that those two planters were not shown in here per the rendering. We would, our intent would be to add two planters, one for seating and one for vegetation, helps define that entry and translates to that, um, the, the primary entry as shown on this concept rendering. So the intent of what we're proposing to be um, the intention would be of what this rendering is conveying.
So if you're on the sidewalk, you have a defined access to that entry, then over to the retail space. The vast majority of people parking on the west who are coming and accessing their uh, vehicle since it is a, you know, you're doing glass repairs, you're doing uh, different home uh, improvements uh, as well as uh, vehicular related uh, elements. Having the primary entry by the, the uh, parking lot obviously has some merit, but defining this area for seating opportunity, defining furniture for seating opportunity, and then these planters to define that walkway to the entrance was really the intent. And that's how we interpreted uh, Commissioner Libre's request. I guess, I guess I'm just struggling with, you know, patio furniture and plaza element still being dry aisle, right? We've defined, we haven't, we haven't defined a street face, street facing element for pedestrians as such. We've defined a drive aisle to be a plaza, right? So I'm, I'm still struggling with, you know, rendering in patio furniture into a drive aisle and then having that be this code defining criteria to be the public facing street front. So um, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just struggling with that like altogether big picture. I think it's not a surprise. I struggled with it last time and the time before as well. Um, so, and, and I don't know, I don't see, I'm trying to think of creative solutions of, you know, how to make that not a drive aisle for fire trucks and, you know, and, and make it work. But I'm just, I keep, uh, I keep seeing only the obvious solution of mirroring that entryway public space to be the entryway and the public space. Yeah. So <clears throat> even, even the rendering that you're showing um, is, is from the, from State Street, I think. I keep getting it mixed up. Um, <clears throat> if you were to show a rendering from, what is that, Gardner Lane? Do I have the right? Yeah. Gardner Lane is where we're trying to get that. Correct. That um, connection. So if you were to have a rendering from there, there's really no entry that you're, you're seeing. Um, and, and I'm not suggesting that this is the solution, but just an, an idea is even if there was some kind of um, archway, you know, a, a, an archway on the sidewalk in between those planters that said glass doctor, and you walked underneath that as you're entering into the plaza, which you're entering into the building. So, you know, something just, there's nothing that really ties the entryway to Gardner and, and something like that might be able to do that. I don't, I don't know that if that's a, a really good solution. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out. Um, just something that says, here's an entry. Okay, um, so if I'm, yeah. Really, really Maureen, it's here's an entry to go to your entry, right? Right, right. So just kind of a quick sketch, but if we define, you know, an arbor with signage for Glass Doctor, something that again, defines that access that, that we're creating for that circulation. 
that would be uh, an intentional architectural feature to guide pedestrians to the entrance. Yeah, something like that. I mean, I you know, I think Jeff, you you would probably come up with some better ideas than what I can come up with, but that's something like that. Yeah. I, I that for me would um, I, I think this is kind of a difficult site um, and that could that could potentially work for me. Appreciate yeah. it. consideration. Carrie, uh, do, do you have some comments? Well, I am one of the things that I just wanted to mention as far as what makes this a little bit more of a challenge is most of that parking is already in place. This was a co-developed um, parcel with human being uh, first in line and then this lot was second in line and that's when we purchased it. But the drainage is already there on the, um, on the east side. We have to keep that into uh, consideration. There's no changing that. That is, that is already in place. And the parking on the west side is already in place. Had none of that been done with also the cross streets coming in to access for our parcel as well as uh, cross access for human being uh, as well as the uh, trash dumpster um, that's a lot of what kind of complicates all this so we took that and then developed from there and I just wanted to throw that out that's that's which you may already be looking at those considerations and looking at those challenges but I just wanted to reiterate those. Can yeah. can maybe staff reiterate or remind us like the big picture of what we're trying to do with street facing, public facing, pedestrian access, all that sort of thing. Cause I think that sometimes it's easy to get lost in the weeds and, you know, look at, look at solutions to make it better and make it better, but we still haven't actually accomplished what we're trying to accomplish. Committee member Heard, are you looking for the, the code that we talked about last time uh, that spe specifies, or are you more looking for um, really trying to engage the public realm and create a public a public realm since a place, um, kind of more objective type of discussion? Oh, you're on mute. I, I think we all know where we're trying to get objectively. What's the subjective like? This is how we're meeting. This this is what we're trying to meet. Uh, so just off the top of my head, without diving into the staff report, uh, one of the primary concerns is uh, Garden City Code Eight Four C. Um, that speaks to all of the design provisions. And I mean, specifically, it speaks about glazing requirements along frontages. Um, you guys, well, this, this use in particular requires a 15% glazing. Um, with previous discussions, it was determined that the vertical vegetation trellises were going to meet that requirement. Um, and then there is frontage requirements. This property is interesting in that the, the property line is in the middle of the road. So being able to utilize essentially the, the curve area as that frontage um, is it, the building needs to address that frontage area. Um, so there's- That's, that's, that's oh. the big one I think, isn't it? Is that the, the primary entrance 
yeah. should face the street. Yeah. Right? Like that's, that's there's like that's that's I think for me like the elephant in the room that we keep like walking around and trying to determine if it's an elephant or not. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, I'm reading the staff report too, but objective five of Garden City Code 84C states that the design of all buildings shall provide visual interest to support the vision for the area as articulated in the comprehensive plan and positively contribute to the overall urban fabric of the community. Um, in the staff report, it was stated that the proposed building orientation appears to be in conflict with Garden City Code. It should, the building should be oriented to a prominent feature such as a corner location, a plaza, a street or the river, and that's directly out of code. Um, buildings and site design should provide invite, inviting entry orientation, should not turn their backs to the street, um, should be toward a public street. Now. Yeah, I just I um it's it's a, it's too big of a hurdle for me to call a drive aisle a patio and say now we have our primary entrance on the street when the primary entrance is not on the street. So I don't I mean I don't know that um I don't know that if the and I I I think you know where we're coming from. It's like we're we're here to say this is what code says, this is what the building says, we need to make them come together and, and get along. And I don't think that at this point, they are enough for me to, to support the application, how it's drawn. And if that means, you know, I mean, the obvious answer all along has been put the entry on the street side, right? And if that means the building has to grow a little bit the other way to meet the program requirements, then maybe explore that. And if that means that there's a compromise somewhere else, like a little bit of a setback variance or, a, you know, if, if that means that we're pinching somewhere else, then we have something to say, okay, we've met this major goal but we've pinched this other minor goal. Is that okay? Is that a balance? Right now, we're just saying, hey, we haven't even made this major goal. So, you know, here and, and here's why not. So I want to meet the major goal first and pinch the minor goals. Do you, do you get where I'm going there? I guess where we're coming from, uh, Commissioner Hurd, is, you know, we have a, a previous desire review approval, which had an expectation that we were meeting with this application. If I go to the address for Grace, which is a State Street address, for them to have their entrance, you know, hundreds of feet away from State Street behind another building in a parking lot um, versus you know, what we're proposing off of Gardner. Seems and like, this, we, 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 we've looked at those we've looked at the neighbors and who's doing okay. what and and that sort of stuff and that's all all well and good and sure it's precedence but this is this is what's before us and this is what we're looking at and, and all of those arguments are in the record and and certainly certainly there for future reference but this is this is what we're looking at and i'm i'm struggling with it i don't know if maureen has a you know magical answer or feels like that there's a reason that it can work this way then then you know I'd, I mean the other consideration is is I mean we could go to the ad you know, the post office and see if we can get a state street address I mean would that resolve the issue no then you'd run into the problem of your street frontage I'm if you're, I mean, oh, no, State in, Street got a, Grace got a State Street address and they're tucked back. And 
we don't have street frontage. So that would lead me to think we could probably, you know, we could at least try. I'm trying to, to find some solution that gets carried as fire engine access. And then your sidewalk goes from State Street across human beings lot to the back corner of the building where the entry is now. I don't know if-, if That is how it currently is and has been um, in addition to what we're doing on Gardner. Yeah, that, that's in our plans right now. That proposed access that you're talking about from State Street, it's right here. And it was previously right there. <laughs> Gotcha. Always been there. Yeah, I don't know what I don't I don't know what that brings up with all the other criteria and how that face meets State Street. We haven't explored that. We haven't seen a staff report about that. But okay. Well, I mean, kind of coming back to the plaza concept, sounds like uh, Commissioner Gresham is somewhat. Uh, you know, considering, I'm not saying that she said there was a solution by any means, but considering defining that, that plaza access as a defined entry to the entrance of the building, that seems like it was something that Commissioner LeBray was potentially on board for as well. He's not here. Um, Commissioner Hurd, it sounds like not on board with that at all, uh, which kind of leads us back to, we have an approved SUP, we have a previously approved DR with this location, but now we have no, <laughs> no way to proceed with you know, trying to come up with a solution that's satisfactory to the commission. I mean, we're, we're kind of at a standstill going, I thought we were, were just renewing an application and instead we're, we're looking at trying to come up with a solution that's more appropriate. We're open to suggestions uh, but we're just trying to keep that function. Jeff, would you please bring up the uh, old site that was approved as well as the new site that, that we're talking about as far as the building design, building shape, uh, the way it sits on the lot. So the, the part that I'm, the, the, honestly, the only thing different between these two images, the entrance, has never changed. The, the entrance is the entrance um, facing State Street. So the only thing that is different that I'm hearing is aesthetics. Because um, there was no more entrance access um, to the Gardner address on the first plan that was approved versus this one. Yeah, there was no. There is less glazing, and we added that glazing in to give that aesthetics plus the plaza. So I want to go back to that. If, if we go strictly to what we're talking about entrance, the entrance is never altered. But we did add the planters, add the plaza space, add Absolutely. additional planters, get rid of these parking spaces, and create a much more substantial entrance to this building on on that facade absolutely to try to address this this common concern that's where i'm kind of i'm pinned between the function of a fire engine and, and how to address a code that we've already been approved for so. i mean to satisfy this request last time we added a pedestrian access on carlton bay the sidewalk that comes across. So I'm, I'm kind of in Carrie's boat where you know, we've added a substantial amount of entrance to this building to define it. Well, Jeff, like I said, I, I would be open to looking at um, if you enhance the, the pedestrian entrance to your area. Um, it, it's not a primary entrance. Derek is you know, 
spot on on that, but I am willing to look at um, if you make it appear as if it's an entrance, um, reinforcing, especially the, the pedestrian connectivity, then I, I would be open to looking at that. Appreciate that, Commissioner Gresham. Thank you. And then if that if that comes back like that, I would I would have included also um, what steps or what what steps and methods are going to be in place for when that is actually a drive aisle that it's safe for the plaza users. You know, is that a is that an hours of operation thing when the fire trucks are coming and going is not coinciding with people having a coffee there or is it uh is it signage i just i just want to know that that plaza which we're hoping interprets and acts and functions as a plaza we know what what's going to happen when a fire truck's driving through the plaza so if i'm if i'm hearing uh I guess both commissioners correctly. Uh, I guess circling back to Commissioner Gresham, um, I have kind of two samples just for feedback. Um, here's kind of a traditional conceptual arbor. If we did that and something in a more you know, slightly industrial tone, similar to this one, which is incorporated in kind of a wide flange type. So you have these. It's more uh, industrial, you know, metal accents, but it's done, you know, for for more of kind of an arbor feature. Is that in line with what you had envisioned, Commissioner Gresham? Um, more the first one, but definitely more of a, a style that would fit in with. I mean, I don't see that as fitting in with the glass doctor. Um, right. But, but the industrial, but, yeah, but something that is a doorway, an entry way, not just this big awning over this huge area that you're not, that doesn't distinguish itself from anything else, but something that is a entry. Mm -hmm. So if we had, because these are like an, like an eye, so this is metal, and then you have kind of these accent L's instead of the wood that was here. So if you have little accent L's, create the definition of that arbor. And then we define you know, the signage on that as well. Would that meet your intent? I believe so. Okay. Uh, or, or, bring, or, or bring the, the glass doctor triangle as it exists now over the over the actual entryway, bring that architectural element down to the street facing corner and then move the leg of that, of which it looks like there's only one leg holding up that triangle, bring that leg out of the way of the fire truck. You're saying put it here? Yeah. Take this, put it there. Then you can still walk underneath that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it would be nice to kind of replicate that glass doctor, um, the, the triangle kind of on that side, but more as you're walking underneath it to enter, as long as it doesn't interfere, obviously with the, the fire truck, um, maybe tie it into the, for the lack of a better term, archway. Okay. Um, Carrie, as far as hours of operation for the fire engine, can you maybe speak to that? And then, you know, if you're inclined to either of these proposed solutions. 
Well, the obviously that design has that pillar, the support leg would be right in the middle of that bay door. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just a business owner. I'm not a designer. <laughs> so I'm not sure how that would work. I looked at that idea as far as trying to bring that down. And I don't have a problem with that at all, other than trying to make it work. I just don't know how to make it work. Um, and some, some people say, well, why does it have to be a V? Well, the whole idea because of the V is, you know, the speed of, of State Street. And, and so what we're trying to do is align that angle to be the most um, e easy to read as they're coming down that road. That instead of being flush on the building, and you know, that angle gives it the best um, from coming out of Boise as well as going uh, out of Eagle into Garden City. So that's, uh, but I'm, I'm open to that. If there's a way to make that work, I just don't know what that would be. As well as trying to give the actual entrance, obviously cover, rain, snow, et cetera, uh, that I don't know if it could be a reduced version of that main one down on that, uh, in front of that bay to where it'd be right there at our gardener uh, side and leave that main one as we've designed already. What does the committee think of, of that? I'm not sure I completely followed, but um, you know, definitely not suggesting you take away the V from where it is now. Um, one, it's a requirement to cover your entrance. Um, I was thinking more just kind of uh, replicating you know, the, the, the style or the look or the feel of that. It doesn't have to be a perfect you know, V doesn't even, you know, nothing like that. Just kind of replicating that on that side to where you combine that with some kind of entryway, archway, whatever it may be. Um, it kind of makes a little bit more sense and it does create an entrance okay. along that street. I see. If it were not an arch, as you described, but maybe it was a pop out uh, in an L shape in front of the bay and it wraps around on the gardener side and makes that feel more with the glazing with that. Um, and then directional signage of move this direction towards the opening. Does that, does that fit what you're trying to accomplish as far as your wants. I'm not sure. You're not an architect. I'm not an architect. <laughs> and we're trying to talk like architects. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 I think you get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish. We, we just need to create an entryway. Um, however, that is designed. I mean, I'd like to see you tie it into your existing building as far as the look and feel. Um, it, it does need to make sense. So not right up on this, on the building, you know, you don't want your, that's not your entryway. It needs to be, uh, um, almost, uh, going through the middle, I think of the, um, plaza driveway. Um, yeah. I, I, I did think I liked something about you saying tying it into the glazing but I'm not sure how you would do that because I'm not thinking, I'm not picturing it um, uh, attached to the building. Does okay. that make sense? Okay.
I'd like to hear your feedback, Representative Hurd, as far as your thoughts on all of that. Yeah, I don't have any further comments. Okay. Um, I believe that I'm hearing that this this project is being tabled um, at this point in time. Um, is is that seeming to be correct with the committee members? Yeah. Do you do you need a motion to table it or? Uh, please. And um, then so moved to date certain. Uh, that would be the preferable. So to the 21st. 21st without a staff report. If that works yeah. with Jeff, that date. Commissioner Gresham, that works. So moved. And, and I'll second it and then just comments. I think I think Jeff has enough, uh, enough information from this dialogue. <clears throat> Excuse me. And and previous comments that he can uh, he can come back with a proposal that uh, is going to be closer. I think he knows where I stand, and he knows where Maureen stands, and he knows where Brett stands. So put put that all in the in the blender and make magic. I would also like to add um, discussion to this to the record. Um, I think it's important that everybody know and that the record reflect that this committee does endeavor to be consistent with the application of code. Um, and it's quite difficult when other locations are brought up. Um, there may be, it, it is difficult to do an, an off the base review um, as code may have changed. There may have been site specific um, considerations that were dealt with in the past. I just want that uh, to be noted. And with that, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Take care. You too. Thank you. And with that, we'll move on to subdivision fiscal year 2021, number 10, Petra Point Townhomes. Uh, combined preliminary final plat process was a plan unit development um, located at 4900 Alworth Street for nine residential units. And I'll turn it over to the applicant, Craig Kolchak. Oh, there we go. Hang on. There we go. Oh, there we are. Yay. Um, we're, um, we've made some adjustments based on the staff report we last received. Um, we've, uh, taken that, uh, bike path and we've moved it over five feet. We, uh, contacted the property owner to the West of us, and he's agreed to give us uh, a five foot easement on his property to put five foot of that sidewalk or bike path on his property. Um, and the other five foot will be on our property plus another two foot for the total of 12 foot easement. Um, I've got the um, legal description and the uh, exhibit. Um, it was a late deal because I didn't get it till Friday working this out with the landowner. I submitted that to Hannah and maybe you could pull that up if you have a chance, Anna. Yeah, I can pull it up. It's also online for everyone's reference. Hang on here. Can everybody see that? No. No, but we have seen it. Is it is in the record? You've seen both both uh, exhibits. Uh, correct. Um, Miss Beal sent them out today. Okay, cool. Um, so we've addressed that. Um, We've also submitted uh, a letter from the uh, trash pickup guys that um, gave us an option to put the um, trash cans on the street um, via the sidewalk. Um, Tuesday is the pickup date for that. Um, I also submitted some photographs of everyone on that street. That's exactly what they do. 
and have been doing that for the past, I don't know, 30 years or however long those houses have been there from Allworth all the way down through um, uh, Adam Street. Um, the, it's acceptable to the uh, trash company pickup. Um, it's an established um, practice throughout the entire neighborhood. And I think that addresses the issue of trash cans. Uh, you've got another issue, um, another similar project down on 45th Street, um, Flourish that was put together by um, uh, NeighborWorks of Boise. There's 20 some units down there and that's exactly what they do as well. Um, on um, the parking issue, uh, we've come up, you know, we, we've asked for a, a variance on the parking. Um, when we initially submitted this project, we were told that we had to do a, a full uh, PUD application, and um, that's what we did. Uh, but going back and looking at a minor PUD um, on the parking code, uh, we meet the criteria for um, dimensionalized as far as a lot goes. Had we not had to include the owner's um, lot in that project, which isn't being developed, is not being used. We're only developing the site that's next to him. I wanted to do a minor land division, but I could have done that, but then I couldn't have developed the property for some reason. I don't understand that at all. Um, anyway, we're you know, looking at the, the variance that we're asking for for the parking, we meet the criteria of the minor planned unit development. Um, and with units over 1,000 square feet, that in, in your code um, 8-6B-3, it says that uh, only two parking spaces are required. Um, we've also addressed the uh, landscaping. We've shown the landscaping um, to show the uh, um, the bike path along there and the um, preliminary plat also shows the easement of that bike path along there as well. Um, I think we've addressed every question that was really outstanding that was major. If you guys have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Any questions of the applicant? Not at this time. And we'll turn it over to Ms. Beal for our staff report. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is subdivision fiscal year 2021-0001 or one zero zero one zero. Um, there were resubmittals submitted on February 18th, 2022. Um, within those resubmittals, staff was able to analyze previous code compliance issues. And in the staff report, all those uh, new comments related to the, the new submittals are highlighted in bold or highlighted in, in bolded text. Essentially, um, what staff concluded was that the parking remains the same as previously proposed. There are two waivers drafted in the condition document um, allowing for the deficiency in parking. The applicant has asked for zero guest parking spaces when four is technically required by code. They have also asked for a, um, a variance to the enclosed parking requirements based off of the type of housing proposed three bedroom units require two enclosed parking spaces within the dwelling unit, whereas what is proposed is one enclosed and then one being in the driveway. And that's again, a waiver. Um, updated elevations were provided. They show, or the elevation is essentially from Allworth Street facing the development. It includes a view of the side facade, or essentially it should be considered the front facade of those two dwelling units facing Allworth Street. It also includes a what looks like a wrought iron fence to the, um, the, the west of the property. And then it also includes the vision of the terminus view. The terminus view consists of two different types of lower lying shrubs. 
and two Franz Fontaine trees. Uh, additionally, there is a condition drafted to require an open vision fence at, the, at this perimeter boundary line um, behind the landscaped area of the terminus view. Staff does have concerns regarding the screening that the proposed landscaping can provide as the this is the common drive and headlights would be protruding into the adjacent property. Um, even though it does appear to look like that is the common drive turnaround area of the River Point subdivision on that northern property boundary line. And um, the reason why staff has drafted a condition to include both the terminus view landscaping and the open fencing um, or open vision fencing along this property boundary line is to allow for the natural amenity of the canal along the uh, northern property line to be uh, essentially utilized and become an amenity of the subdivision. The submitted materials identifying open or the submitted materials do identify open landscaped areas uh, with the terminus view being a portion of this open area. However, perimeter landscaping areas within the subdivision cannot count towards the common open areas of the subdivision. Staff does not believe that the subdivision meets common open space requirements while it does meet the landscape requirements. Because there is a requirement for common open space for this subdivision, a condition has been drafted in the decision document um, to require the 5% or the 10% common open space. If the application has to change significantly enough at the construction plan level, so con considering you give an approval recommendation here today and city council does end up approving it at a later date, um, but the application has to change their site plan to accommodate the common open space, the application will be required to come back through the subdivision process if it impacts the site significantly enough. Um, the applicant has requested that trash services be provided along Allworth and has submitted photos proving that most, if not all, um, residential dwelling units along Allworth and Adams Street provide that on-street trash service. However, staff recommends against it just simply because as subdivisions um, are increasingly more common along Adams and Allworth, providing these trash carts along Adams and Allworth would in increase the potential congestion of this street. Um, there was a Republic Service comment from um, Republic Services, and they did mention that their preferred option would be to have um, the trash services on site with a turnaround area, but they would be able to service the, the trash carts from Allworth Street. And there was a late submittal, as the applicant has mentioned, regarding the pedestrian pathway easement. It is staff's understanding that it's a seven foot wide easement on the, their property with a five foot wide easement on the adjacent property to the west. This would create a 12 foot wide public pedestrian easement, uh, which is code compliant with Garden City Code. And it is drafted in the decision document to require the construction of this pedestrian pathway um, at the time of subdivision construction. We do have the easement um, legal descriptions in the exhibit, but we still need the grantee grantor verbiage with um, all, all the details. So that hasn't been approved necessarily quite yet. We still need to see that verbiage. Um, it, it is through discussion with the applicant today, this morning that I had with Craig that the intent is to have the public pedestrian pathway where staff has requested it. Um, and then also have this a six foot tall vinyl fencing. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I assumed that the previously proposed six foot tall vinyl fencing would, would stay there along the um, pedestrian pathway uh, abutting right up to the pavement. Yes. 
Okay, and then just as a last comment, the reason why we recommended you do the planned unit development subdivision process versus the minor planned unit development subdivision process is um, the first reason is that with the minor land division, the intent to divide a property for single family dwellings is not permitted with the minor land division. So in that the lot already consists of a single family dwelling that essentially would not allow you to go the minor land division route. And then second, you can only divide a parcel into four lots instead of um, nine, eight. eight. Yeah, instead of eight or nine, which is what you're requesting to do. So even without the single family dwelling on the lot, you would only be able to get four lots total through that process. Okay. And with that, I stand for questions. Thank you, Ms. Bale. Any questions for staff? You know, what is designated as the common open space at this point? That is unknown. The landscape plans show landscaped open areas highlighted or surrounded in red on that on one of the landscape documents, the most recent. Um, but in looking at it, it looks like most of that area cannot qualify as common open space just because common open space cannot be in the setbacks, nor can it be um, like perimeter landscaping areas. So do you interpret all of that? Let's see, where's the north arrow? Do you interpret all of that as perimeter landscaping at this point? Uh, yes, or at least setback. One or, one or the other. One, one or the other. Um, so the oh, only yeah. potential common open space area might be a portion of that landscaped area in the, I'll call it the front along Allworth. Um, and then, I mean, that, that looks like it, potentially the common drive area, potentially those landscaped areas and driveways, but it wouldn't necessarily meet any of the common open space standard requirements, such as like, uh, dimensional standards or amenity standards. And that's all found in the eight, Garden City Code 84L. So there's specific requirements of open space. Yeah, what they are, how big they are, and what you do in them, basically. Thank you. And then another question is to save me going and finding that condition. I know you've conditioned that the pathway be con actually constructed is that condition that it's actually constructed on both the subject lot we're talking about and the neighboring lot. So it's completely constructed? Correct. Okay. Well, it's not called out that specifically because this, uh, the easement wasn't submitted until today, whereas the decision document was drafted last week. So we can certainly make it more specific to include that, but right now it is just the, condition to require that that pathway be constructed, not yeah. even necessarily the easement. That's that's our full intent too. We, we didn't just put that together to appease anybody. We have a full intention of making that part of the deal. And Perfect. Thanks. we'd be willing to put anything in writing that says that that's a requirement, even if it's just a, a note on the plat. Uh, So I have a question, Hannah. Um, the one of the original um, comments in the staff report was uh, how each unit needed to be connected to the street with a walkway. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm looking at the new submittals, and I'm I'm guessing that there's a walkway. Um, yes, but it it doesn't. Um, it, it seems like there's uh, a, a walkway, then a driveway, then maybe a walkway, then a driveway. So, and then, and how would the person on the walkway, how does that relate to where the entrance is, to the door? I'm not quite grasping how that works. 
Have you had a, had a, so, had a chance to look at that? I, in the, I, I suppose the most obvious site layout would be the landscaping plans that do demonstrate it specifically. I, I'm mm -hmm. looking at the colored landscape plan. Um, there is a identified concrete walkway that does connect to the existing attached sidewalk on Allworth that goes down the common drive, essentially could look like part of the common drive unless it's raised and has some kind of curb gutter like situation or is a different hardscape material but um, updated renderings or updated schematic drawings did not show what that would really look like other than looking at this landscape plan. So is this the plan you're looking at? Yes. Okay, and I assume you're saying here's the concrete walkway? Yep. Where? What I'm missing. Where it your mouse was. So, and I just have my iPad, so I can't direct you, but where your mouse is, and then going, I'll say north along the common drive, it does cross that driveway. I'm not seeing any delineation of a walkway. Right. Um, I mean, is this supposed to be the walkway all through here? All the way through nice. here, all the way down through here. I mean, we could put a line right here, but you, you know, in order to meet some of the requirements, this entire thing is concrete. The drive is concrete, the, the uh, garage approaches are concrete, and the sidewalk is concrete. For a delineation, we could do a colored concrete or something that would do it. We've also got um, a there's a rolled curb along there too. So um, I can I can understand why it, it's kind of confusing to take a look at it and not understand that it's a pathway. But with it, one of the things we have to realize is we're talking about 0.63 acres. This is pretty tight. Um, and so in order to put a sidewalk in, we've delineated those planters and delineated where the sidewalk would go with that. I'd be more than happy to put a colored integrated concrete uh, pathway along there so you know that that's the sidewalk. But I mean, there's no other way to get a sidewalk down there than what we've done. Since you've got driveways going in there and the, the common drive is also a uh, part of that. Um, so if I'm walking here, say I'm walking along here. Yes. How do I get to the front door of this unit? You're down the driveway? The unit is right. Can you see my, I that's can't. the front door right there. Right there? Right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the person has to go out into the driveway and then back around. Or just drive into the drive, drive into the garage and go into the, into the house, one of the two, yeah. But yeah. that's well, how you get I'm it. I'm talking about someone coming from a side. Oh yeah, if somebody was coming up, you'd, you'd do that and come over and do that. And I guess if if you if you wanted to, we could have a a concrete strip through that planter area over there as well. I mean, yeah. part of me is saying, well, that's kind of what we're intending, but part of me is also saying, God, do we need more concrete? And I don't know that we need more concrete. <laughs> um, so, Derek, do you? I mean, how are you seeing that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a it's not a connection to the entry. It's a connection to the driveway, right? Yeah. And can yeah. we can we bring uh, you know, can we bring the planter out to the drive aisle and then have the sidewalks along the building? Um, that oh. kind of that kind of eliminates privacy to the entrance of the building itself. You know, now you're going to have people walking right in front of your front door. Yeah. Uh, you know, the way we've got it set up is kind of each home is a destination. So, you know, right. you're walking down there. I mean, we're not talking 100 feet to the, the front door. We're talking, you know, let's see, probably, I don't know, 15 feet to the other approach. The other way to do that is you see where those shrubberies are? Mm -hmm. You could come straight off of the um, entryway where the green patches are. Okay because this is just garage and garage right here. All right. But then we see the green space and the, the planters. 
right? Uh -huh. You can do a direct deal from this sidewalk straight in like that. I guess that would be a way to do it. But the only the only requirement for having access to the front of Allworth is the first build the first two buildings. They have to have direct access to Allworth because they front Allworth. The other ones don't have to. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> the the design criteria states that if you've got frontage on Allworth Street, those are the two units that have to have direct access to, and they do. Um, the the side light of doing direct access to everyone other than just walking down the common drive we're only talking a depth of a 97 feet from front to back it's pretty tight pretty tight unit um but you know i'd be more than happy to redesign that and put a pathway straight straight to it but we've got so much concrete out there i'm trying to add you know those are common area lots anyway i'm trying to add as much open space as i can so it's not a parabolic reflector in the summertime we need to have some kind of greenscape in there to cool things down a bit yeah i think i think the biggest um the biggest thing that's going to speak to it being a sidewalk is if it is a different texture different color yeah i think so too um, you know if it's if it's cobblestone or you know permeable pavers that sort of thing something different because then when we pull in off Allworth yeah what we yeah. look at this and our reaction is that oh there's two sidewalks I'm going to be careful I'm going to watch out for pedestrians that sort of kind of yeah psych I, I agree psychological trigger so yeah that makes I can, sense and, and in the plan show it as such so that when we turn off the sidewalk as a pedestrian we have this like continuous two sidewalks yeah. that's going yeah. back up I like that idea we're, we're pretty far into discussion right now. Um, yep. and I, I would like Sorry. to pause, pause this for a second to make sure that there's nobody, in, no public that wishes to testify on this matter. And then we can bring it back uh, to Mr. Kulchuk for discussions. Um, is there anybody on Zoom that wishes to testify? If so, please raise your hand, turn on your screen, otherwise notify us. All right, seeing none, thank you for that interruption. We'll go back to discussion, thanks. Sorry. So um, you, you're right in saying that the, well, the, the code does require that um, entries to the buildings have a pedestrian connection to the sidewalk and uh, having a pedestrian connection to the driveway is not the same as connecting to the entry. Um, I, I'm, I get what you're saying about, you know, if there's ways to reduce um, concrete, I'm, I'm all in favor. Um, but but I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to address that. To, to, you know, I mean, you're, you're asking for a really big parking waiver. And yet, we have no connection from those units in the back to the sidewalk on Allworth, other than through a driveway, well, which... Well, not only that, but you'd have access to that bike path that's back there, too, in the backyards that take you straight to Allworth as well. I mean, I thought For that some of them, yes. For some of them, yeah. Um, so that, that's one particular issue um the other thing i just wanted to bring up really quick is the uh the terminal view i know you have two trees placed back there but i'm looking at the renderings and i i think you can see hold on um the two trees that you have placed in the back to i think somewhat address um your terminal view they're actually to the side and what you're actually looking at based on this rendering it, in, in the fence that I believe that you're going to put in there is a fence. It's, it's not actually addressing the terminal view. Here, let me My understanding share. was the last conversation we had, nobody wanted a fence back there. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I thought someone said you were putting a fence back there. No. This is, so here's your terminal view, which is, Nothing. Right. 
but that's also the turnaround. There's nothing back there anyway, but a turnaround for the property that's to the to the east of that, and then forward. Right, that, which is what I don't want people seeing on Allworth when they're driving by. Is an open that's, space. That's no uh, the parking over there. Well, I, I, I would would that be our responsibility, or would that be the responsibility of the developer to the north? On your property, creating a terminal view is your responsibility. Which okay, is something nice. Like which is something nice that, to look at. You're saying yeah. they've got parking over there. Uh, I'm not suggesting you have to screen their parking. I am suggesting that you have a common drive going down and oh. ending, and you have to have oh, some yeah, yeah. kind of. Uh, visually attractive feature at the okay. end of that common driveway. Um, I believe that a, a majority of that end there is uh, part of the seepage bed that addresses the drainage to the property. We've got a limited amount, but we could bring those trees in closer to kind of block that. And if we needed to, we could actually put some kind of a fence between the trees as part of a, I don't know, a, visually, a visual amenity that would block that view from the end. And it would also mitigate, um, I think somebody mentioned uh, headlights and stuff. We could put something up like that. I mean, does that make sense? Uh, I'm looking at the code for terminal Vista. Or I could give the developer next to us more money to put trees up there. The, the, Hannah no, or, I or oh, sorry, go ahead, Jared. No. <laughs> I was going to ask if Hannah or Jenna can add anything about with the terminal vista, what are our appropriate treatments for that? Um, I will do a quick search for code uh, to see the exact language if you give me just a second. Um, I think I. I think Craig, you're getting you're getting the picture though. Is bring bring the trees in, give us something yeah, yeah. to look at. It's a landscape feature at the end that we're looking at. Maybe it's some sort of screening element, um, but yeah, just something so that when we turn down that drive, it's not just like uh, me. Yeah, and it's not just a fence either. Maybe we put yeah. a fence and um, a pergola and a bench there or something. And that and that may give you a little bit of common. Uh, Common space, open space, which um, is a good segue into yeah. the common space area yeah. that <laughs> is non-existent. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to addressing the common space, um, because of the site being so small and the access requirements, and regardless of how many units you have in there. Um, this is an infill project. It's not what I would define as a subdivision, even though the application says such. Um, it's 0.63 acres is what we're working with. Um, and we're not for the fact that we have setbacks and perimeter, you know, whatever. There's not enough room to have a park in there or any type of amenity that would maybe give you some open space per se, um, because you need access to the units regardless of whether there's four or six or eight. Um, there's just not enough room to, to I understand the, the, the requirements, but there's not enough room to do that. And to limit me, you know, we've got open space, we've got common lots. And to, to say that, well, you've got common lots and you've got landscaping and, you know, it more than meets the percentage that we're looking at but we're not gonna let you use it because we have setbacks there in its perimeter. Um, it kind of limits my ability to do anything with this site. And I'm more than willing to bend over backwards to, to make everything right with everybody. But in the same sense, I gotta kind of stick up for myself in a little bit too, where it makes sense to, you know, there's a reason we have variances and it's not because I'm trying to take advantage of anyone. It's because that's the right thing to do. Um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Hannah. Um, we can't vary open space requirements, can we? 
Sorry, what was that? Uh, I don't think open space requirements is something that can be varied, is it? Uh, he could ask for a waiver to common open space standards. Um, however, this was discussed, at, I believe, at the last hearing where um, open space is very much so a part of the planned unit development. So by asking for a waiver to open space, it goes directly against the intent of a planned unit development. And there lies the conundrum. Right. And, and I think that, you know, it's, it's something that we often hear. I have this much land and I can't provide this because I have to provide that. And, you know, I think your, your guest parking and your common open space and everything that's missing in this could be, could be put in this plan if you a, make the unit smaller, B, eliminate a unit. It's not, it's not impossible. It's well, just, but, it's you know, just drawing. Also, yeah, but you've also said, okay, now you've got this plan. Now we're gonna take 12 feet off this plan for a, 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 a bike path for connectivity. And I wish I had, you, you know, this bike path goes nowhere. It goes to the North and then it stops. There's pumping stations, there's fences all over the place. I'm not quite sure how you're gonna get there. And to the South, You've got nothing but uh, houses and power poles and industrial um, development. I've got a picture of it. There's no way there's a bike path that's gonna go out towards um, Glenwood. No way in heck, unless some, year, some time in the future, like maybe 50 years when everybody gets rid of their commercial developments out there and turns into something different. But it's, um, you know, I, I don't have a problem putting it in there, but you know, each time I turn around, I get a limitation that's making it even more difficult for me to develop this. Um, the 12 foot was a big deal, especially since, and I'm going to beat with a dead horse, right down the street, there's two access points to the, to the park and, and the, um, the uh, green belt. But, you know, the way we did this and moving it over, it, it works because I got, you know, I had to think outside the box and got an easement from Kenny that was big enough that I could put it in, but not too big that I'd have to take out any trees, which was perfect. And I'm more than happy to, to, to do anything that I can to make this property work. And I'm not sure if the owner um, or the developer, because I just represent the developer, is willing to, you know, maybe we do get rid of two lots. I don't know. But I don't know if that pencils or not. Uh, and like I said, it's, it's 0.6 three acres. It's a real small little parcel. And by doing this, we're, you know, adding benefit as a tax base to the city of Garden City. We're improving something that in the first place was just a bear lot full of goat heads. And um, we're making it something, we're making Garden City better by putting it in. But, you know, it's a challenge. I mean, there's no doubt about it. There is a challenge here. And I've tried to meet that as best I could. Yeah, it is. Any development's challenging, you know, no matter what size And if it wasn't challenging, it wouldn't be fun. You know, right? Really. And I think I think it was mentioned in the first hearing, and I'll and I'll just say it again: when we're when we're looking at waivers and code requires four guest parking spots, and you're asking for zero, like why? You're you're just asking for no guest parking because you don't want to put it in and you say you can't fit it because you have to have eight because of pencils, right? But well, like if there's a justifiable reason or some some argument why it's not important to have guest parking or you know why it's not important to have common open space because we all have rooftop decks or or things like that. Like I don't see any I don't see any justification for the waivers other than oh this is the way it's this is the way it's drawn. Point well taken. Um, in this, in the same sense, um, we're, we're trying to do the best we can and we're trying to comply with everything that we can. And we've changed a bunch of, you know, the, the initial landscaping plan has morphed into what it is now to try to make it a little more amenable to the residents there and 
um, for lack of a better term, eye candy when you're driving down the road. As far as no guest parking, we've got a single car garage, okay? And the guest parking would be in the drive. So you had two spots, two parking Which spots. Which is where your pedestrian is supposed to be crossing. There's more than enough room for the pedestrians to cross there and to park a car. We've got- And it's, and it's where your other required spot for your three bedroom houses parking right three bedroom houses where where are you proposing that guest parking is in the drive in front in the drive mm -hmm. but that's where your second required parking spot is that should be enclosed oh gotcha 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 well yeah mm -hmm. unless i was doing a minor epud then i could do it <laughs> um i'm up There's i'm some... open for i'm open for suggestions and then we'll get back with the owner and see what we can come up with. Yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to be as, I want to be as compliable as possible to compliant as possible to the city. Cause I've done one, two, three, three major um, subdivisions in garden city already. And I'd like to continue to do that. We've done, um, Village Oak, we've done 43rd, oh, we've done 40th Street, and we've done, uh, and I've done Flourish, so there's four right there, and then a little deal over on 38th Street. I like making Garden City better than what it used to be. Yeah, that's, that's, that's commendable for sure, and I, I mean, it's, it's not our job to design it, really, you know, I mean, we could, we could have, uh, work sessions and get out the sketch paper and magic markers <laughs> and do that. But that's not our job. That's, you know, on the plan, it says Oahe landscape design. I don't know who's doing the, you know, the overall conceptual and programming, but, um, you know, I think that you, you look at code, you look what's required, you take those puzzle pieces and those building blocks and you see how they all fit onto the site. Yeah. I mean, if, yeah. when we put the eight units on there, we got, we got to go ahead to do eight units. You're only supposed to do four. We got a waiver on that right off the bat during the uh, pre-application meeting. Um, and that's why we moved forward with what we had. Yeah. And I don't, it's not the quantity. It's the, what the quantity requires. The quantity requires this much open space, this much parking, this much, this many amenities, that sort of thing. So it's not, it's not that. I, it's eight yeah. that's the problem it's the all the other stuff that goes with it yeah and i, and I think you know if, if we're going to talk big picture um i think that the, the code should be site specific and not just a general this is what you need percentage wise um if, if you had a site specific code then you could make adjustments and there wouldn't be all these waivers involved or whatever else because when you're when you're talking about a big piece of property and i'll give you an example yeah, the, the property to the north of us has only eight units, but it has twice the property that we do, which allows them to do more than what we did. Um, when you have a smaller piece of property, you got to be creative and, and still try to comply with what I thought was um, open space requirements. But now we've got setback requirements that don't include open space. And I, I you know, I think it's very... Um, constrictive and limited based on the the project that we've got and granted i'm kind of prejudiced because i like I like this design and i like what we've accomplished but um you know i'm open for suggestions we can go back and talk to the owner um but you know i'd like to keep it the way it is and if you've got other suggestions or recommendations i'm open to listen to what they are Hannah? Sorry, I was typing minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a tendency to ramble, sorry. I, I don't know, I, I think, so this is Jenna. Um, I think you're oh, asking yeah. Hannah for suggestions right now. Um, I, well, I, I appreciate that you want specific suggestions, I think. And, and the committee may have a few, but as a committee member heard noted, 
Um, also, trying to have the committee help design on the spot can be. No, um, no, I'm not asking. Um, that. And, and you do have the staff report that does bring out or bring to light some of these big uh, situations that we've talked about, ranging from parking, uh, and the, the trash cans, the Republic storage, uh, the open space, um, yeah. the fencing. Um, one of the things I don't remember if it was in the, the staff report or not, but the terminal view. Um, and yeah, that was sure never mentioned, but I agree with that. Make sure that you have a list of those items um, to troubleshoot with um, and to play with your design to see if you can create a situation where there's a co-compliance. Or I also heard if you are asking for the exceptions, um, why are those exceptions warranted by the design? Um, and I've heard that a couple of times from the committee members. Um, and, and so with, with the parking, for example, what I'm hearing is you're asking for parking waivers. How are you justifying that? So there is the pathway that's being proposed, but what else? And how are you achieving um, addressing the reduction in parking? Um, same with open space, I heard another comment from committee member Heard saying, if you're asking for a reduction in the common space, are you addressing it through rooftop decks or how are you addressing um, and making those achievements? Yeah, I, I took a look at the, the open space requirement and the percentage of landscaping that needed to be there. We've met that requirement and then some, uh, but what it negates that is the setback um, issue where you can't have open space if there's a setback. Um, and again, you know, regardless of what we do, um, this lot is pretty small. Um, and it's not as if we're talking about 15 acres versus 13 acres, it's 0.63 acres. I'm limited to what I can do. I wanna develop this property. I wanna develop it in the best way possible. Uh, to, you know, I don't like to do things shabbily. Um, and the four other projects that I'm talking about, I think you'll agree, those turn out quite well and they're pretty tight in, its, in themselves. Um, it, it's just a, a little frustrating that, you know, I've tried to address everything and, um, you know, there's waivers and then, then I'm being told that, well, just because there's waivers doesn't mean you get to have them. Well, you, you know, the- uh, that's, I'm, I, I have to interrupt you. No, that, that's sure. exactly right. Just because there's the potential to have a waiver does not mean you get it. No, I You have to provide I justification. I mean, yeah, I have, I have to justify the reason for it. And- um, and, and I, I want to say further that the size of the of the lot that you're developing is not justification. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah. And it has to be a good justification, not just a <laughs> justification. Come on, man. It is a good justification. What are you talking about? <laughs> and and one one thing we haven't talked about but i know is mentioned in the staff report too is the pathway and its relationship with the the rear units and trying to not create just an alleyway with six foot tall fences on each side of that so if if this plan is somehow modified to work with all the other things that are missing and we right. still have this backyard connection to the pathway if that can be open fencing or if there's yeah, that makes land, more sense. Land, landscape yeah. between the pathway and the fencing, just something to to soften that edge and not have it be a six foot like tall. Like a bowling alley. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah. agree. As always, it's a pleasure talking with you guys. Yeah, good luck. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> So would you be um, okay with the, the next, what, Hannah, what was the date that you had, you had said? 16th. Uh, so we, the next hearing date is not going to be able to happen, assuming that I'll need to do another staff report. So not March 21st, um, the next hearing date would be April 4th. Um, 
April 4th. I think so, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> and it, so I, I'll make a motion to uh, move this to um, the April 4th meeting. Second. One passing shot on the, the garbage. That's never going to change. They're always going to be putting it out on the street. Um, it's been going on for 40 years and it'll continue going on for 40 years. It's not creating any congestion. Um, there's a bike path there that um, mitigates some of the parking or some of the traffic and there's also a median out there. Um, okay, I'm done. <laughs> All right. But with, your, but with your major redesign, there may be plenty of room for a dumpster. Uh, yeah, 97 feet. Think about that. That's the depth. 97 right. feet. The motion on the table. Did we get a second? I did we did second get a it. second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All right, guys. Thanks, Craig. To the memories, boys and girls. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Um, and that'll move us right, right along. There's no new business or pre-applications to discussion. Any, any city council updates or anything? Hey, remember this item? This is what happened. Goodness, I'm trying to think. Um, the next, the so next the river, river path is next Monday. Yeah, it's next Monday, but no update per se. Torn. Okay. Have we have we told you that torn flats passed? Maybe maybe we haven't. I don't know if we have told which, you. Which one? Torn flats off of Forty Fifth Street. I don't remember that one. With uh, Richard Wilmot, it was kind of like the more colorful townhome project got it got it there were, there were some revisions after it left this this committee goodness what were they um, no grass creep the units mm -hmm. themselves they still need to address the the front facade on 45th street was still required to address the public realm more. So I've been working with them on that. Um, okay. Thanks. It's just, it's good to know when, when things go through and it ends up getting passed differently or unexpectedly than, you know, how, how we recommended, then we can, we can maybe, uh, speak to that better or kind of learn from what council is looking for or not looking for? Mm, that's a long past though. Yeah, but they're gonna have to come back. Yeah, for some of the units. Yeah, you can yeah. Uh, speak to that. Uh, Casino Beach came through last spring and summer. Um, and one of the conditions in the decision document that went through all the deciding bodies was that um, some of those units that weren't fully developed needed to come back to design review. Right now they're in their construction plan approval phases. So expect to be seeing some of those units come back here in the next few months. Is that the one on 34th or 35th? 34th. Some of the edges weren't quite defined, some of the corners or something. Right. So if you remember some of the anchor units, um, oh, yeah. they had not been fully developed. And then there's also what we called at the time the Hannah's unit. Mm -hmm. um, so at least those two units or three, I suppose. Um, okay. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate all the work that you do. Um, it's no easy task. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, Motion we to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned at 4.43. See you guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you.